Hello Math 2, this is Mrs. Bricky, and this video is for Unit 1, Lesson 4. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, polynomials that have more terms. In the past lesson, we focused on binomials, and then we're also going to have more operations. Like, what if we want to multiply three uh, binomials together? Things like that. All right, so when you're adding polynomials together, we add together terms that are alike. And remember that alike means that they have the same variables with the same power. Well, if we want to add together trinomials or any number of terms, we really just need to look for the ones that are alike. And that can be a little bit challenging simply because, you know, the list of terms might be long. But you just want to look for, you know, maybe start with looking for what has the highest power. So I have a 2x squared in this first trinomial and I have a 1x squared in the second trinomial. So I can combine those two together because they have the variable x with the power of 2 and I get a total of 3x squared. And then I like to go through and look for, you know, the next most powerful, which would just be uh, x with power 1. And I can identify this 5x and also this negative 3x. And if I combine those, I get a 2x. <clears throat> and then finally, you know, if uh, you get down to your constants, you want to just look and see how many constants are there that uh, can be combined together. We've got a 4 and a 7, and they combine together to give us 11. So we've identified all those uh, partnerships, those uh, like terms, and we've combined them together to get our answer. So here it says simplify the expression. We've got that plus symbol in between that's telling us that we are adding these two polynomials together. Uh, again, I see that 3x squared and the 2x squared are alike. I can add those together to get 5x squared. Um, here's my uh, x with the power 1. I've got an x to the power 1 and a minus x to the power 1. Well, those add together to give me 0x. Um, we normally wouldn't like write that in our expression. I'm going to show it for a second, but then I'll write my final answer. And then I have a negative 4 and a negative 3, so that combines to give me a negative 7. So our final answer would be the binomial x 5x squared minus 7, and we wouldn't write this 0 term down. Subtraction works much the same. Just make sure you're very careful with your signs. And remember that the subtraction applies to each term of the poly polynomial after the subtraction symbol. So uh, I have a negative 3. Sorry, I have a, I'm subtracting a negative 3x. I'm subtracting this positive x squared, and I'm subtracting the 7. Um, so we apply the subtraction to each term that is being subtracted. Um, minusing a negative is the same as adding, so we can kind of clean it up to this. And then we just need to identify like terms. And again, you might sort of do a shorthand where you just kind of pass that subtraction symbol into the polynomial. Um, and if you do that, that's great if you like that shorthand and if that works for you. Okay, so then we would want to identify our like terms. Well, I've got a 2x squared and a negative x squared. That combines to give me a 1x squared. We've got a 5x and a 3x, which combines together to give me 8. And I have a 4 and a negative 7, which combine to give me a negative 3. So our answer is x squared plus 8x minus 3. And again, you might not write out three steps or, you know, three or four steps to do this. You may do this in a lot more brief way on your paper. Okay, so find each difference. So we've got in our first polynomial, negative 4m squared plus 3m minus 1, and we're subtracting m, minus, m plus 2, so that subtraction applies to the m and the 2. So now if I look for like terms to combine, um, this is my most powerful term. It's going to come first, negative 4m squared. Um, I've got a 3m and a negative m, so that combines to give me 2m. And then I have a negative 1 and a negative 2. That combines together to give me negative 3.
Okay, so now I have an 8 plus 5y, and I'm subtracting y squared plus 7y minus 9. So I've got my 8 and my 5y. This negative applies to each term that comes after it. It applies to the y squared. It applies to the 7y, and it also applies to the negative 9, which makes that a plus 9. So it looks like my most powerful term is right here, negative y squared. So that's going to start my answer. Uh, and then I have a 5y and a negative 7y. That can be combined to a negative 2y. And then I have a constant of 8 and a constant of 9. Those can combine to give me 17. So my final answer for this subtraction problem is negative y squared minus 2y plus 17. Okay, so if you want to pause and do a couple practice problems for adding and subtracting, you can, and we are going to go into some multiplying. So recall that if there is a grouping symbol immediately to the left of the exponent, that designates the entire group as the base. Um, so what does it mean for a base to be squared? Well, it means the base multiplied by the base. So a 7 squared means 7 times 7. An x squared means x times x. <clears throat> uh, 7x squared, well, this first one, it's only a base of x, so that's 7 times x times x. I can't really do a lot to simplify it, but if I have a grouping symbol there, that means that the base is that group. That means 7x times 7x, that's a 49x squared. We already talked about those a couple of lessons ago, but now I have another variation. I have an x plus 7 squared. Well, in this case, the base is x plus 7. Well, that means that I what I really have here is an x plus 7 multiplied by another x plus 7. That's what it means for it to be squared. So I would need to distribute. I get x squared plus 7x. That takes care of distributing the x. And now I distribute the 7. I get another 7x and a 49. So my final answer here simplified would be x squared. Those two combine to give me a 14x plus a 49. So this is called a binomial squared. Um, something to be really careful of is that you can't distribute exponents. Uh, exponents mean that we have some uh, repeated multiplication. If we have a binomial squared, it means that we have the binomial multiplied by that binomial itself. We cannot distribute exponents. So a 5 plus an x squared is not 25 plus x squared. We cannot do that. Um, it would be a 5 plus x multiplied by a 5 plus x. And so the 25 definitely comes up as part of our answer, but our answer is a little bit more complicated than just a 25 plus an x squared. And in fact, it is an x squared plus a 10x plus a 25. I think that the reason sometimes students want to do this is because of this exponent rule where if I have a 5x squared, which means that it's a 5x multiplied by a 5x, another way of thinking about that is that the 5 is squared and the x is squared. So this is not distribution though. This is not, there's no addition happening over here. So I think this rule sometimes makes students um, make this error over here. So remember, anytime you see a binomial squared, it means to multiply that binomial by itself. So let's practice that. I have a 3x minus 1 squared. Um, sometimes students like to scribble that out and repeat it right next to itself like this. If you like to do that, um, it's fine. It's kind of faster than rewriting everything. So we're going to distribute the 3x. 3x multiplied by 3x gives me 9x squared. 3x multiplied by negative 1 gives me a negative 3x. Now I'm going to switch and distribute the negative 1. That's a 
negative 3x when I multiply it together, and then negative 1 multiplied by negative 1 is positive 1. When I combine my like terms together, I get 9x squared minus 6x plus 1. So we can do that again, another practice. I have a 5r plus 8 that is being squared. So that's 5r plus 8 multiplied by 5r plus 8. So when we distribute, we get 25r squared because 5 times 5 is 25. And we've got a couple of factors of r there. Uh, 5r times 8 is 40r. Now I'll distribute the 8. Um, that's an additional 40r. And then 8 times 8 is 64. We've combined together our like terms, and we have a final answer of 24r squared plus 80r plus 64. Um, we can also multiply a binomial by a trinomial. Um, it's a little, there, there's going to be additional terms that show up because we are multiplying sort of these bigger polynomials together, but we can definitely do it. So um, if we're multiplying the binomial x plus 5 by the trinomial x squared minus 2x minus 7, we just need to distribute the x and then distribute the 5. So I'm going to start with distributing the x. x times x squared gives me x to the power of 3 x times 2x gives me a negative 2x squared, and then x times negative 7 gives me a negative 7x. So I've now finished distributing the x, and I now need to distribute the 5. When I'm writing down my work for multiplying um, binomials by trinomials, I like to be smart where I write um, the second distribution. I don't like to write my next term right here. And the reason I don't is because this list is going to get kind of long and then I have to find the things that combine. So what I like to do instead is write it down right below its like term as I'm timesing it. And that way I can just add the columns up. So I multiplied 5 by x squared to get 5x squared. So I just wrote that beneath the negative 2x squared. And in a second I'll combine them. Okay, I'm going to continue multiplying by 5 and distributing that 5. 5 times negative 2x is negative 10x. So I'm going to write that below the negative 7x so that I can combine those. And then finally, I have 5 times negative 7, which is negative 35. And that one doesn't have a like term. But by writing it this way, I'm ready to combine those columns. My answer is x to the third plus 3x squared, because I combined this negative 2x and the positive 5x. I kind of covered up the plus there. And then I have a negative 7x and a negative 10x. That's a total of negative 17x. And then my last term is a negative 35. So this is my answer. So I ended up with a couple of pairs of like terms to combine. Let's try that again. It's a little bit tricky at first. Lots of terms to keep track of. So we're going to multiply by x minus 6. So I'm going to first distribute the x. That's 3x to the third power. It doesn't look like a 3x to the third power. Sorry, sometimes my um, computer doesn't catch my capture my handwriting very well. Um, and now I'm going to multiply the negative 5x by that x. So that's a negative 5x squared. And then the x times 1 is just x. So I've distributed the x. Now I need to distribute the negative 6. Well, when I times the negative 6 by the 3x squared, I get negative 16, or sorry, negative 18x squared. So I'm going to write that below its like term. And now negative 6 times negative 5x is a positive 30x, which gets written here. And then negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. Now I can add up the columns here to get my final answer 3x squared. Um, negative 5 minus 18 is negative 23x squared, and 1x plus 30x is 31x, and then my constant of negative 6. So here is my answer. <clears throat> 
I uh, can also have situations come up where I have three things that I want to multiply together. Maybe I want to multiply a 3x by an x plus 8 by a 3x minus 4. Well, if that's the case, you just need to do two of them together at first and then multiply by the third. For example, with numbers, if I wanted to know what is 5 times 2 times 19, I would just multiply the 5 and the 2 together to get 10, and I would multiply that by the 19 to get 190. So we pick 2 to times together, and then once we do that, we multiply by the third one. So it doesn't really matter which 2 you pick to start with. Um, personally, I like to, if I have a situation like this with a monomial and two binomials, I prefer to multiply the binomials together first and then distribute the monomial, but you can do it the way you like. So I'm going to multiply by x. That gives me 3x squared minus 4x. Now I'm going to distribute the 8. That's a 24x and a negative 32. So uh, I have 3x squared. Um, these two combine to give me 20x and then negative 32. So that was these two factors multiplied together. Now I need to take that and multiply it by 3x. And this is just a monomial, so it's easy to distribute through. I end up with 9x to the third plus 60x squared, and then uh, 3 times 32 is, that would be a negative 96x. And that's my final answer there. Um, it would work the same with this 5 times x minus 1 squared. That would be a 5 times an x minus 1 times by another x minus 1. So maybe you could multiply those x minus 1s together and then distribute the 5. Uh, I'm going to skip doing that for the purpose of the video. Um, we also might have a situation where we want to multiply together three binomials. Um, again, just pick two of them to multiply together and then multiply by the third. Um, so I'm going to choose uh, these two to multiply together. That's just a choice. You could pick different ones. I'm going to leave the x minus 1 here. So if I multiply these together, I get 3x squared minus 4x plus 24x minus 32. So combining those middle terms, and I get a positive 20x here. So I end up with a trinomial that's being multiplied by that binomial. So then I just need to be careful to distribute both the x and the minus 1. So this gives me 3x to the power 3 plus 20x squared and then negative 32x. So I distributed the x. Now I'm going to distribute the minus 1. This is a minus 3x squared minus 20x, and then that ends up being a plus 32 since I'm multiplying by negative 1. And I again, I wrote strategically so that I could just add up those like terms. Whoops, that's a third power. 3x to the third. Uh, 20x squared minus 3x squared gives me 17x squared. This will be negative 52x and then plus 32. So there's my final answer. <clears throat> okay, um, this is our last example, and um, we're going to do four parts, though, A, B, C, and D. So we've got a rectangle, and this rectangle has a length of 2x minus 7 and a width of x plus 5. So I'm going to go ahead and just label this as the length and this as the width. Um, our first question says, create a function p of x that represents the perimeter. Uh, well, for perimeter, that means we need to add up all of the sides. And so don't forget, there's four sides that we need to add up. So that's a 2x minus 7, an x plus 5, another 2x minus 7, and another x plus 5. Those are the four sides of the rectangle. So if we combine like terms, the perimeter of this rectangle 
let's see, we've got 2x plus one more, that's three, plus two more, that's five, and one more, that's six. So we have 6x, negative 7 plus 5 is negative 2, minus 7 is negative 9, plus 5 is negative 4. So our perimeter function is uh, p of x is equal to 6x minus 4. Okay, part B says create another function a of x that represents the area of the rectangle. Well, for area of a rectangle, that would be length times width. So our area would be a 2x minus 7 multiplied by an x plus 5. Um, it says down here we want to give our answer in standard form, so we need to multiply that together. So the 2x multiplied by the x gives me 2x squared. 2x times 5 is 10x. Now I need to distribute the negative 7. That's a negative 7x and a negative 35. So our area function is 2x squared plus, let's see, we have a 10x and a negative 7x. So that's a 3x and a minus 35. So our perimeter is 6x minus 4 and our area is 2x squared plus 3x minus 35. Okay, so for, it says for x equals 9, what are the perimeter and area? Well, the perimeter, if x is equal to 9, would be 6 times 9 minus 4. And if we calculate that, that gives us a perimeter of 50 centimeters. The area, if x is equal to 9, is 2 times 9 squared plus 3 times 9 minus 35. And I just need to put that into my calculator. That's 154, and because this is a length multiplied by a width, this is a square centimeter. Okay, and now finally, part D. If the perimeter is 32, what is the area? Well, we know that the perimeter is 6x minus 4. This is the perimeter function. So we know that that perimeter has to be equal to 32. So we're going to use the perimeter equation to solve for x. And then once we know what x is, we can use that x value to solve for the area. So if I know that 6x minus 4 is equal to 32, that means 6x is equal to 36, just adding 4 to both sides of the equation. And then if I divide by 6, I get that x is equal to 6. So now that I know that x is equal to 6, I can solve for the area. The area of a rectangle, of our rectangle if x is equal to 6, is equal to 2 times 6 squared plus 3 multiplied by 6 minus 35. So if I calculate that, I get 55 centimeters squared. So if the perimeter of the rectangle is 32, then the area would be 55 centimeters squared. All right, that's it. So you should have an assignment either on paper or through Edge Elastic. So make sure that you get that done and let your teacher know if you have any questions. Thanks a lot.